Okay, I think we're now ready to move on and finally review some dedicated tooling for dealing with global state management. And the tool I'm gonna to show you is sort of the de facto tool. It's one called Pina. But real quick, before we get started, if you're researching this on your own, you also might come across a tool called Vuex or Vuex, however you wanna pronounce it. Um, you can safely ignore that. Pina is the official replacement for Vuex. So you know what? You don't even need to consider it. Just move on straight to Pina. All right, let's get going. All right, so here's what I'd like to do. In the next chapter, we're gonna put all these pieces together and whip up a small little example project. But for now, just to demonstrate the basic workflow, I wanna take the makeshift counter store that we created in the last couple episodes and convert this to Pina. All right, let's get going. NPM install Pina. All right. Next, I'm gonna go into my entry point, which is main.js. All right, and let's import it, create Pina from Pina, and then we're gonna register it as a plugin. So we can do it by saying app.use create Pina, and I'll call that as a function. And that's it, we're ready to go. So now if we go to counter store, uh, in terms of file naming conventions, again, you can do whatever you want. Whatever your company is already doing is what you should do. But you also might see people use capital letters, and that's what I generally do. So again, whatever you want, but this is generally what I prefer. Okay, next I'm gonna delete all of this and rebuild it from scratch. To begin, we want to define a new store. So I can import define store from Pina. All right, let's call that now. Now, the first argument is going to be a name. It can be anything you want. In our case, counter would be perfectly fine. And mostly this is used when wiring up to DevTools, and I'll show you that in a minute. Next, we're gonna have an object where we can declare the state, any actions we might have, any getters or computed properties, all of that will go here. So in our case, rather than doing it at the top level, like we did in the last episode, I'm instead going to define a function called state, and that can return an object. So very similar to your standard view components. Okay, so now let's assign this to a variable. So I could do something like this, but again, following typical conventions, uh, this is very similar to composables, we might begin it with use. So use counter store. But again, whatever you wanna call it uh, works for me. All right, the only remaining step of course is to export this and we're ready to go. So now if I come back to counter view, let's do this. We're going to import use counter store from our new store. And the only difference here is I need to call this function. Okay, let's do it like this. Let counter equals use counter store. Okay, so now this should mostly reproduce what we had in the previous episode. The only difference is this section right here where we call a increment function or action. For now, just to show you that you can, let's mutate it directly. So I can say counter.count .count plus plus. And this is important. Notice that I'm able to access count directly off of our store here. Even though it's within a state function that returns an object, I can still access it as if it was declared on the top level. Okay, so now if I come back to Chrome and give it a refresh, this should do exactly what it did in the last episode, and it does. But now we have some cool wins that come from this. For example, if I go to the View tab, well, a couple of things. Notice we had this new Pina tab. And at this point, notice we only have the one store, Counter. So notice that is the same name as what we have here. If I changed it to My Counter and come back, let's give it a little refresh. Sure enough, that name gets updated. So it's like an identifier. Okay, let's bring it back to Counter. So anyways, one more refresh, and I can see the initial count is zero. I can increment it, it stays in sync, and of course I can tweak this on my own. And when we do, that will of course be reflected on the page. Cool. Next we have general time travel functionality. So notice if I switch over here to the timeline, I have this new Pina section. And we can see if I increment this, we get a new one. If I hover over it, what do we have? We have a mutation on the counter store. The old value is nine and the new value was 10. So this is incredibly useful for debugging. And if I keep doing this, notice that I have time travel support. So I'm sorry, this is a little hard to see. 
But notice if I hover over these, I can time travel back to the previous values. Or I can advance the timeline back to what we currently have. Pretty cool. Okay, but anyways, what else? Let's go back to our counter view. So yes, we can mutate our state directly, but again, if you'd rather reach for dedicated actions, we should return that counter.increment function that we had in the last episode. All right, let's switch back to counter store. And again, the only difference is, rather than defining it here, I'm going to nest it within an actions object. So we will increment this, and notice I can interact again, I can interact with the state as if it's a top-level property on the object. So very similar to how you'd work with the options API. So we switch back, and now that's working as well. Pretty cool. But now, what about that silly guard logic we had before where you can't increment past 10? Okay, let's do this. Why don't we say, well, if the current count is less than 10, only on that condition will we increment it. And that'll do it. So if we give it a shot, I can go up to 10, but I can't go beyond that. But what if we also want to extend this? Maybe the button will tell you how many more times you can click it. So in this case, uh, it would say increment five, increment four, three, two. How would we do that? Well, of course, we would reach for uh, a traditional computed property. Or within the context of a store, we could call that a getter. Same thing, create a getter's object, and this is effectively your computed properties. So we might have one called remaining, where, hmm, how do we wanna do this? Well, we might wanna extract the maximum count, but for now, I'll just do a little duplication and say return 10 minus the current count. And now we have our getter. All right, let's use it. Switch back, and maybe we'll do it right within here. In parentheses, we'll say counter.remaining. We access it just like uh, any other state or any other computed property. And then I can say remaining. Okay, so let's give that a refresh. And sure enough, five remaining, four, three, two. It's all so easy. And we could even disable this button. Here, let's clean this up just a little bit. Uh, we could disable the button if there are no remaining clicks. Disabled equals not counter remaining. Okay, switch back. We have hot reloading here, and sure enough, that button is deactivated. But if we refresh, it's active, 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 inactive, or disabled. Okay, so now, hopefully, this is all starting to make good sense. If I switch back to my counter store, we can see that a typical Pina store is split up into three components, so to speak. You have your state, your actions, and your getters. And again, if that's confusing, in your head, just, just map it. State is your data. It's just your data that you're keeping track of. Your actions are functions. They're just your methods. And then your getters are your computed properties. They're effectively the same thing. They just have different names. But in your head, do this mapping, and then you'll completely understand it. Okay. So I think we've reviewed the absolute basics, and I don't, I, I don't do that to be um, condescending. When I'm learning something new, I do sort of want to be treated like a three-year-old. Just give me the basic, the most basic possible example so that I can understand this. But now I think you're ready. In the next chapter, why don't we build something with a little more substance, something that we can still build in, in 20 or 30 minutes, but uh, nonetheless, something that will demonstrate all of these components and techniques. I'll see you then.